The season is over and Max Verstappen is crowned 2023 world champion, or at least that's what some people will have you believe. But here at Grid Talk, we are here to re-spark your enthusiasm for the 2023 season. Welcome back to the Grid Talk podcast. This is episode 264, where we will be previewing the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix in Jeddah. I'm your host, Tom Horrocks, and today I'm joined by a Grid Talk legend, George Housen. <laughs> Good afternoon, Tom. <laughs> F1 writer, Olivia Cairo. Hello. And um, the, uh, the Grid Talk MVP, Tom Downey. I don't know what you mean by that, but Hello. <laughs> Well, my version is most valuable podcaster. So uh, um, if you enjoy this podcast, we would love it if you could leave us a five star rating on Spotify and a five star review on Apple Podcasts. And if you're one of the 72 percent of listeners who are not subscribed to the channel, why not subscribe now to ensure you never miss a show again? Just make sure you click the bell so you know when we are live. We are nearing 900 subscribers now, so please help us crack that thousand before the summer break. That's my personal target. So as I've already alluded to, we're going to be we're going to be uh, previewing the Je the Jeddah Grand Prix this weekend. And uh, Tom, we'll go go to you first. It's 27 turns, believed to be the fastest uh, street track in the world. Two previous races with Hamilton and Verstappen winning those two races. Some minor track changes once again. What do you expect to see from this circuit this year? More of the same or, or something different? I think we will get an element of more of the same because Jeddah is the second fastest. Uh, circuits on the calendar this year. You know, second only to Monza, I believe, which has a higher top speed, obviously, Templar speed. Um, but Jeddah, yeah, you know, 27, 28 turns, like you said, really, really twisty, a proper old school street circuit, even though it's only been built for a couple of years. Um, that was Ross Braun's vision for it. He wanted it to be your more traditional or, or old school street circuits, you know, very, very fast and, um, you know, very, very intense, you know, very, you know, very sort of like hard going. Hopefully this year we won't have as many accidents because Mick seems to have a love affair with the, with the walls on that circuit. <laughs> um, you, you know, so, you know, I, I, he didn't help himself last year, bless him. But um, yeah, um, the circuit is, I was trying to reserve judgment because obviously we see a lot of oil money in F1 and, you know, there's a lot of expansion into the Middle East, which is a different conversation in itself. Um, if you ignore where the circuit is, and I'm not turning this into a political thing, if you ignore where the circuit is and everything around it, and if you look at the issues that we had last year, you know, with the you know, with the potential missile strike or something, um, that missile turned out to be Verstappen. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, I, I think it is quite a good circuit. I, I do enjoy watching, you know, the cars go around there. Obviously, 2021 was absolutely explosive start literally down the back straight for Max and Lewis. Um, but last year we saw some really, really good racing. And I think looking at the circuit, it has been one of the best additions to the calendar. Yeah, so it's uh, it's one of the few tracks on the calendar that genuinely scares me when I watch it. And I, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, so I'm still reserving judgment in that case. But certainly got a nice flow to it. And, uh, and yeah, it certainly seems to be a challenge for the drivers. But uh, one thing that wasn't really a challenge last weekend was, uh, was Red Bull's Olivia and one point shy of a perfect start. But uh, characteristics vastly different to Bahrain this weekend. How do you see this shaping up for Red Bull this weekend? Um, I definitely think it will be a great track for Red Bull, specifically because uh, last year Perez was on pole for qualifying, so it does seem to be a strong suit for both drivers. Um, it will also, I feel, be more of a, an exciting brace to have at the beginning of the season, because last weekend's race was a bit of a downer for me, personally, so um, I do think it will be quite exciting, even though we I'm expecting Red Bull dominance to kind of show through. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be uh, difficult to predict anything other than that. But uh, certainly beyond beyond any predictions that we had in pre-season, George, without a doubt, the surprise package, Aston Martin, uh, definitely the winner of uh, of of the winter the winter championship. Stroll on the road to recovery. Alonso driving better than he has in his entire life, if you believe him. Are they really the second fastest team, or was it just uh, the characteristics of Bahrain? Well, it's, it's hard to tell, Tom. I mean, um, you know, going off of Bahrain, they were definitely the fastest, uh, second fastest car there. Absolutely. Um, 
Alonso drove past Ferrari and uh, Mercedes during that race, and Lance Stroll managed to wrestle his car to P6 despite having surgery two weeks before. If you've seen the pictures of the guy, you know he's he's almost in a full body cast, and here, here, two weeks later here he is getting a getting a sick place. You know the guy comes under a lot of you know comes under a lot of fire, obviously because you know let's be frank, he is there in the team because of his father. But when you know when he has a good um, when he has a good race like that, you got to give him kudos as well. So we'll see how they get on in in, in Saudi Arabia. It's a very different track, Bahrain. It's very much a power circuit. Here in in Jeddah, it's you know it's a very quick track, but also at the same time you really need aerodynamics to come into it. And how they'll stack up against Mercedes and, and Ferrari there, we'll, we'll just have to see. But if anybody can get you know another good result, another podium or whatever out of this race, it's Fernando Alonso, and he will be an extremely difficult man to pass around a circuit where, as we've seen, where you know drivers like Max Verstappen have very much got their elbow elbows out over the years to great effect. So. I have to see if they get another good result in Saudi, then it's uh, it's advantage Aston Martin, really. Yeah, yeah, ab- absolutely. It's um, it, it's going to be interesting to see how that how they crack on and if it's if they're going to have anywhere near the pace that they certainly had in testing. We obviously had testing and practice at the same venue, so we've only seen one one reference point so far. So it'd be good to go to another circuit to see what uh, what the difference is. Now, third in the Constructors' Championship, Tom, is Mercedes. Very close to taking a podium in Bahrain, but they're only in third due to some classic Ferrari unreliability. Are they a team in crisis? I wouldn't say in crisis, but I think what you've got to remember is when you get to the top of a sport, A, everybody's going to be coming after you, and B, there's only one way to go, and that's down. I mean, you know, it happened to Ferrari, you know, sort of like you know, the mid noughties It happened to Red Bull in 2014, and it's happened to Mercedes. You know, it, the cracks were somewhat starting to show in 2021, and it happened in quite spectacular fashion last season in 2022. Um, uh, actually, no, that's a, a bit harsh on Mercedes because they did still get a pole position in Hungary, and obviously Russell won the sprint and the I was going to say feature race, but he, he won the Grand Prix in. Um, uh, Brazil, so you know, I wouldn't say they're in crisis, but I think they need to perhaps revisit what they're doing because last season they went for the whole no side pods design and it didn't work. You know, on paper it might be fast, but you don't know anything until you get it out on track. And they got that car out on track and it wasn't great, you know, they um they were quite seriously off the pace. Now, I know that, uh, well, apparently Hamilton was testing different setups and stuff, so maybe that's why his performance wasn't truly representative, and we all know how quick he is. You know, you, you know, you know. I'm, I'm not, you know, every, everybody listening to this will probably know that I'm a Max fan, I'm not a Hamilton fan, but I don't hate any driver, and I don't hate Hamilton, and I will always acknowledge and respect just how good he is and just how much he's won. You know, so, you know, so I am... I'm not neutral, but but you know I'm not going to sit here and sort of say oh it's just a car because it wasn't. Um, but I you know they've gone with this whole no side pods design or philosophy if you like again this season, and I just don't. It doesn't seem like it's working. You know they you know they got they got you. Know, Almost schooled by one of their own customer teams. Now, obviously, that wasn't McLaren. Um, you know, but but Aston Martin, they, you know, Alonso had the measure of Hamilton, and the the Merck. Obviously, I'm not an aerodynamicist, but they need to just stick some, just stick some side pods on the car <laughs> because you know it's working for everybody else, and you know it was working for Adrian Newey, and then and you, you know. Okay, you know, I was going to say James Keegan, maybe not. Um, you know, but you know, but it's uh, you know, it's it's. I get that why they want to go with the design because obviously they've put an awful lot of resource, you know, both financially and you know, you know, in terms of human resources and R and D and development and C and C and all you know everything else that goes on in composite manufacturing. But it's obviously not working, and I, I think they said they're bringing a big upgrade package for Imola. Which is what race three, I believe, um, or race four, I can't remember. Um, that upgrade for them can't come soon enough because boy, do they need it. But they're not in crisis. 
Maybe we'll serve the crisis for when the uh, when Imola comes along and they're still a second off the pace. So uh, hopefully for the sake of Formula One, that's that's not going to be the case. But um, Ferrari up next then, Olivia, and uh, somewhat fortunate to come away with a with a podium. But um, also some un- they were quite unlucky with the failure to Charles Leclerc as well. But how close are they to being competitive and do they really have a chance this weekend? Um, I do think they are close to being quite competitive but it is quite sad to see that they are having engine issues when everyone else seems to be struggling with their aerodynamics um so that is a bit of a question mark and that is a bit of an issue for the team um and it doesn't seem like they fixed much by placing a new team principal in that position and they, they still seem to be in the same position and it's quite disappointing because a lot of people now kind of look at this season, especially Ferrari fans, kind of look at the season already with one race in as a continuation of the last season. And so I do think moving on into Saudi Arabia, we will get more of a look at where Ferrari is and whether they have more reliability. Um, As for Charles Leclerc, he's the most unluckiest driver I could think of right now. Um, He's in a good team, but is given machinery that doesn't seem to quite want to comply and work on track but um that is quite sad and I do think we should expect to see a more determined Carlos Sainz maybe that's just me being very optimistic but I do think that he seems to have picked himself up and pulled his socks up and he's ready to get going with the season and be a lot closer to Charles um but yeah no it's quite it's difficult to see um that this one team is struggling with an engine while everyone else is trying to come to grips with the aerodynamic regulations. It's sorry for that. It's, it's very, it's, it's, it's very taxing and it's very confusing, but hopefully in Saudi Arabia it will be fixed. But that's again, me being very, very optimistic. Yeah, if you ever need any evidence to say that it's now an aero formula over an engine formula, you can just look at the spread in in Mercedes engine cars and where they are, and and uh, very similar with, with with the Haas power cars as well. And even just looking at the the Red Bull powertrains cars first and effectively last in the championship. So, aero is definitely definitely the way that uh, the, the championship is being decided at the moment. But uh, moving on to, to fifth place, then George Alfa Romeo in fifth place in the championship. Strong for run from Bottas last time out. Saw them achieve. The, um, that they were they were much better than what their preseason predictions looked like they were going to be. Did they overachieve, or, or where do you see them panning out in the pecking order this weekend? Uh, not sure about overachieving. I mean, end of the day, I think if it was a, an even race, then perhaps you know, uh, perhaps Gasly and Ocon would have uh, finished ahead of them because I think the Alpine is a faster car, but Ocon got about fifteen penalties and Gasly started at the back, so it, it never happened for him, unfortunately, in that sense. But you know, you got you got to be in it to win it, and Bottas was absolutely in it. He was best of the rest, as we as we said on the review show. Um, and I, th- I think for Saudi, I think I think they'll do all right. I mean, I'm looking at the results they had last year. Uh, Joe Grand, you just missed out on points, finished in eleventh, and I'm pretty sure Bottas was in the points before his um before his gearbox blew up. So. You know, it's a track that has treated them fairly well over the years. Whether they'll be faster than Alpine is yet to be seen. I don't think they will. I think if they get any points from this weekend, depending on how many retirements there are up front, I think it'd be a good weekend for them. Um, but, you know, you've got to play the hand you dealt. I mean, has showed that's a great, great effect to last year in Bahrain. Um, so, you know, you could argue they overachieved there. But, you know, Alpha, they're just going to pick up points. And with Valtteri Bottas in, in that car as well, you know, he's, he's going to get absolutely everything he can out of it. So... I think they'll do all right this weekend. Any kind of points will be good for them, and I see them doing it, to be honest. Great. Yeah, they do seem to be in a, in a good place, which is something that I didn't particularly think was going to happen. I thought they were just going to have a slow, gradual decline until Audi take over. But uh, props to them. They seem to be starting this season on a similar footing to where they started last season. Let's hope that with a bit more backing from Audi coming through that they can uh, they, they can they can maintain that over the season. But a team that are not quite where they where they want to be at the moment, Tom. Alpine, on balance, they seem to be the most confident team pre-season, but with very little to show for their for their efforts last time out. Can they improve on their on their two points this weekend, or are we going to see a, a, another penalty fest? Um, I hope we don't see another penalty fest, and I would like to see Alpine actually do something as opposed to concede penalties. Um, I mean, 
Otmar just like shrieks of sour grapes anyway, you know, he's coming out with all these sort of bitter comments about Alonso. Um uh, it, it's hard to say because Bahrain's a relatively easy track, if you like, you, you know, and obviously the team's done a lot of pre-season testing there and it generally promotes good racing. So, you know, Gasly did well to move from 20th to 9th. Um, with Alpine, but it's the same thing every year, isn't it? They have potentially the speed and, you know, the car and the package. You know, it, it looks to be okay. But then the, the, the reliability is just woeful. And then sometimes sometimes they go full Ferrari on the strategy as well. Um, and it's just, if if they can actually keep a car screwed together and have things that don't blow up after five minutes, because it, we saw certainly one of them overheat in Saudi last year. And you know, it's going to be just as hot. It's going to be just as intense. I wouldn't be surprised if one of them retires with mechanical issues because because the car overheats and shuts off or something. Um and if it's going to be anybody, it's going to be Alpine. I'd like to see them do better. I quite like Alpine. I don't like Otmar, especially after Drive to Survive. He just comes across as a boring, bitter old man. Um, you can say the same about Alonso. Um, but um, uh, but you know, but you know, I I quite like both the drivers. And and there's something something about Alpine. You know, because they're you know they're obviously you know a manufacturer team, um, but they're not fighting sort of right at the front, which is a bit counterintuitive when you think about it um i just quite like them you know you know they don't they don't have any customer team to the minute it's just it's just them with their car and their engine and i want to see them do well but i just don't know if they are yeah i, I listened to the uh, interview on the beyond the grid podcast with lauren rossi this morning uh, came out a few days ago and that was a really interesting listen but the key point that came out of that for me was that lauren rossi has said that fourth place this year is the minimum target fifth place would be a failure and based on the evidence of the first race i think fifth place is realistically the bar that they're going to be aiming at i can't see them unless unless mercedes have a monumental collapse or sack off to next season i can't see i can't see them getting anywhere near that target but uh, but time, time will tell but one team that definitely has seems to have hit their pre-season targets olivia is williams Great to be speaking about them this early in the podcast and points ticked off on the first attempt. First of many or a flash in the pan? And also, how do you see Logan Sargent's trajectory? A very impressive debut. Um, I'm quite pleased with Williams, actually, because it's just a, it's a nice change. It, it, it does show the evolution of the sport and maybe that the regulations are working and maybe that Williams' um, development plans are actually moving in the right direction. So hopefully it's a staple to see them that close to the points and in the points. Um, but yeah, no, I'm quite I'm quite pleased with that. I am excited for Logan Sargent, though. Um, he does bring with him, especially living here in Canada and North America, where F1's kind of picking up. Um, Logan Sargent kind of does bring more of um, an element of participation for this side of the world in the sport so I see him being used a lot for um, F1's campaign on this side of the world so uh, that's exciting for him but I will say that his first race in his first race this season was strong he set himself apart from other rookies and also returning drivers um, in the whole grid and um I do hope that it continues to stay. Um, it would be quite interesting to see how how much of a difference there is between Logan Sargent and someone who is stuck in a car that is struggling, like the McLaren um, Oscar Piastri, to see how much um, of a difference there could be between both drivers because a lot of attention was paid to Oscar Piastri and it would be interesting to see where he lands in amongst the rookies and amongst the grid but as for Logan Sargent I think P12 in Bahrain was quite um quite the good start and I hoped that it carries on in the next race especially with the high speeds many corners 27 corners that's a lot so hopefully he sticks it in and doesn't let let it go and crash into the wall and sets himself apart from Nicholas Latifi um but yeah no 
the Williams seems to be kind of solid to me um, and not much of a mishmash of a car as previous times have shown. So, yeah, excited. Yeah, great. It, it'll be it'll be interesting to see if they can maintain this, and you know, obviously McLaren will get better, and and other teams, you know, has to, I'm sure will be scoring points. It's whether they can maintain that is it is only one point, but you know, a, a Sergeant's brilliant debut, best of the rookies, which I don't think anybody would have predicted he would be the best rookie on the opening race of the season. Um, but another team that's got a rookie, the first of our teams with zero points at the moment, George, is, is Alfa Tori. Sonoda did come very close to points, but De Vries was worryingly absent uh, with, with very little pace, but also a bad strategy fell into it as well. Was it just a slow start or is it a, a sign of bigger problems afoot for Alfa Tori? I think Alfa Tori are probably better this season than what they were last season. Last season was really bad for them. They were miles off. Um, to come close to points on on the first race is not a disaster by any means. Um, yeah, I mean, Sonoda looked, Sonoda looked all right. He was chasing down Albon in the last stages for that final point. De Vries, I mean, he started 19, finished 14. Didn't show a hell of a lot, but at the same time, it's his, it's his first race in half a year, so I can give him, I'm cutting some slack on that one. Um I'm not expecting too much from them uh, in Saudi Arabia. I've just looked up their previous results. I mean, Gasly scored a couple of points there a few years ago, but um, Sonoda, I think he, I think he was a lap off in the first race, and he was, uh, and he was didn't start the last one last year. So it is not a happy hunting ground for him, um, and it's an extremely challenging track for Nick DeVries to to come into uh, for his second, well, sorry, his third F1 race, his second race this season. Um, I mean, as people know who play the F1 game, there is not a lot of room for mistake in Jeddah. They've opened the circuit up a little bit in some places, which will help, help visibility, of course, but it's a terrifying track. As we saw with Mick Schumacher's horrible crash there last year, you make a mistake and you're heading into a wall at 150 miles an hour, and that is not a position anyone wants to be in. So it's going to be a very challenging one for him. Um, if anybody can do it, he's probably the most experienced rookie you'll ever see at 28, 29 years old or whatever he is. So, yeah, uh, I'm not expecting a lot from Alphatari this weekend. They'll be hoping for some sort of points, but I think they'll probably need quite a few retirements to get it. Yeah, that's. I think that's a fair reflection of of uh, pot- potential this season and, uh, and and this weekend as well. But some of them moving on to to Haas, their best ever pre season. But it seems same old Haas with a with a pointless outing. Hulk did show some promise in qualifying. Will his race pace improve this weekend? And and can Magnussen potentially challenge for points as well, or will he just keep losing his front wing? Um. <laughs> Well, to be fair, it was Hulkenberg who lost his front wing, I think, or totally damaged his front wing in, in Bahrain. Um, I think with Hulk, there was definitely an element of being race rusty, you know, because he, because he last drove uh, in a race what two years ago. Um, I think uh, Hulk has driven around Saudi because it was when Seb had COVID last year, or am I getting? I can't remember. Getting no, yeah, he he was in last year for for Seb. Yeah. Oh, of course it was here. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you know, so he has driven the track, so he has some knowledge of it, you know, and he, he he's only missed one race compared to the compared to the rest of the grid, um, you know, at that circuit of of the drivers who've done three races there. Um, has God, I don't, know, I, I honestly don't know, is is the answer because you know they had one driver who qualified P five, another driver who qualified what like P sixteen, fifteen, something like that. So it's just like you know, it's you know, and you'd have thought the drivers. You know, who qualified where they did would have been the other way around with them. Um, I wonder if they might struggle a bit in Jeddah because they don't, you know, it's easy for a team to look good in Bahrain. Um, I think Jeddah might be a bit of a reality check, and that's why we're going to see teams who have a better aero package or a better downforce package, especially combined with the sort of high speed nature of the circuit. Um, you know, so they might do okay. Um, again, you know, reliability I think could be an issue after seeing you know the Ferrari works team you know break down in the first race. You know, Jed is going to be even hotter, and you know the, the car is going to be under even even more load and you know, more forces coming through it. They, they're going to have one eye on, on reliability and overheating, much like I said about Alpine. Now, every team is going to be looking at that, but I think Alpine and um, Ferrari powered cars can be the ones who are going to be most susceptible to it. 
I mean, where they'll finish, they might sneak a point because if we get and if we get like an absolute worldly of a race, you know, where there's safety cars galore and red flags and you know, you know, sort of like all this and that happening, then you know, they might sort of benefit from someone else's misfortune. That you know, you as I say quite a lot on on this show, you play the hand that you were dealt in F one, and it it might be the case of that. I don't know. Let's find out. And I want to see Haas do well because I do like them. You know, especially after came and got that poll last year, it's a sort of like plucky underdog story. Everybody wants to see it, but I just don't know if we will. Yeah, I think we're yet to see that that first flashpoint with the Jeddah Street Circuit as well. I liken it a lot to Baku, where people were just very, very cautious and careful the first year. The second year was crazy at, at Baku, and I know we didn't. It wasn't absolutely mental the, the second year for us for Saudi Arabia, but uh, I, I just feel like we're going to have a flashpoint there. They're going to have something big happening there, like not quite as bad as your Spa ninety eight sixteen car pileup or whatever. But I think that we're we're going to see some uh, we're going to see some uh, a lot of carbon fiber at some point in in Saudi Arabia so um I hope obviously hopefully everyone is okay from that we don't we don't want to see we don't want to see people getting hurt and stuff like that but I can I can see uh, I can see that coming at some point whether it be this year or in the future I'm I'm not sure uh, but I'd love to say that's it for the teams but unfortunately we do still have to talk about McLaren Olivia and uh breaks my heart to be talking about them last but I'm still representing we're in my Lando Norris top as we speak so I'm uh, I, I'm keeping the faith that that McLaren are going to get back up there. They had good race pace, it seemed, but um, um, is it inevitable that McLaren are going to climb the order or is it really as bad as it looks? I do, no. <laughs> I do think it's inevitable that they're going to climb up there. Um, I, I still, I think I might be the only one saying this, but I, I'm, I'm quite confused with McLaren. Um, it was quite surprising to see them at the bottom but I, I guess we were all expecting it because it was in the rumblings and in the rumors but to see it happening was quite shocking um as a Daniel Ricardo fan I'm kind of like haha you got out while you could but I don't think it's going to be an a situation that would have them being at the bottom for too long but I at the same time I don't think it's going to be um, a situation of them getting well into the points anytime soon. So um, I think they're going to be straddling the, the 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 fringes of the points for a while. Um, I, we still don't know how to feel about Oscar Piastri. I think we will get to know again at the circus, just as everyone has mentioned. It's it's quite a grueling circuit to be at. So many corners, heavy. Um, downforce and speed and it, it it's 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 an exciting track to see the potential of the cars and see the potential of the drivers as well coming into this season so um I as for where I see McLaren heading I, I guess it's going to be straddling the fringes of the points um and possibly still where they are but as it's for as it is going for reliability and um the issue that Oscar Piastri had that's also quite worrying um, but I don't think it's going to be an issue for too long. But it's 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 not looking too great, but it's not looking too grim, in my opinion, for McLaren. Yeah, I, I think just points, uh, they're just trying to just tick off as many points as possible in these early phases. That B-spec car cannot come cannot come soon enough. Uh, so that's all the teams then. We're just gonna now going to go on to our predictions for, for the race. Start with you, George. Uh, pole position, top three, and a bold prediction. All in one go. All right. Uh, let's. <laughs> so, um, you know what? I actually looked this up. I was surprised to see that Sergio Perez got pole at Jeddah last mm -hmm. year. So, I'm going to be an optimist and I'm going to go against the trend I can see happening. I'm going to say Perez for pole. Um, <laughs> I don't really believe that. That could be my bold prediction in itself. He's a street honest, circuit so specialist, though. So, it's a good shout. He, he is. He is very good around streets. Um, although this. This is not really a traditional street circuit. It's very different to the others, um, but he does do pretty well there for sure. Um, but for the for the win, I, I just can't. I just can't see anybody else other than Max Verstappen. I'll be honest, and it really pains me to say that. Um, but if his car holds up, I'm going to go with Charles Leclerc for second. He, I think he can. I think Perez might mess it up, or there might be some alternate strategy by. 
accident or design that Red Bull put him on to get Max out, uh, gets Max through or something like that. Um, and I'll go for Perez to complete the podium. Um, ball prediction. Hmm. McLaren in the points. Nice. Same. I like you. You can I, stay. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell who the McLaren fans are in this chat. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Everyone. Everyone's a McLaren fan. All right. Okay. <laughs> Tom, your predictions, poll top three and a bold prediction. Um, I mean, Paul, I'm, I'm going to say Max. He's just, he's in such a purple patch of form. It's hard to look past it. Top three, I'm going to say Max. Um, I think we might see another Red Bull one too. I really do. Um, so I'm going to say Max and Checo. Um, and then... Third. In fact, no, I'm going to change my mind. Sorry, I'm ch- changing my mind. Um, I'm going to say Max P1, Alonso P2, and Checo oh. P3. Oh. <laughs> Getting in amongst it. Love so, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then my, my bold prediction, we have no safety cars, whether virtual or physical. Wow. That's definitely bold. That's definitely bold. Round Jeddah, yeah. And I, I, I hope you're wrong. Uh, Thanks. <laughs> okay, Olivia? <laughs> Um, Tom stole my number two as Alonzo, but let me think of something else. Um, I think Paul will go to a Red Bull as well. Um, I'm sticking with Max, although Checo got it last time. I, I'll stick with Max. Um, for the podium, I will I will say um, Perez, Charles, and then um, I'll stick Alonzo in third. Uh, and then... My bold prediction, um, this is quite bold, I, I feel. I'd say Carlos Sainz wins. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice. Hedging your bets there. <laughs> Putting the, the bold prediction separate from the other one. Like that. I, and to be honest, that would be uh, that would be a great thing as well for Carlos Sainz this part in the season to really to really kickstart his season although he is the you know highest in the championship of the two ferrari drivers right now that would be great for uh for for him to uh to really get a foothold in this championship early doors um but yeah so um if uh we'll just let everyone now our, our fellow podcasters plug their social handles so um george where can people go if they want to hear more from you uh, you can head over to the Football Chronicle, uh, head over to footballchronicle.com um, and you can see a weekly uh, opinion piece by me on the world of football. That's football spelt the Spanish way, F-U-T-B-O-L.com. Um, usually usually analysing something that's happened in the past week. My last one was something going over the, the big six, as it's known in the Premier League, and their biggest defeats. And surprisingly, one of them was at the hands of my team, which I was very happy and <laughs> very happy and surprised to uh, to boast about. So, uh, I mean, it was like before I was born, but still it counts in the record books. So, yeah, you can head over there if you want to see, see and hear more from me. Okay, and, and Tom, where can people go to find out more from you? Yeah, so I'm obviously part of uh, FM Chronicle, like you said. I, I'm i one of the hosts of Grid Talk, and I also am part of a sort of new show that we do called Formula Talk, which I do with one of our panellists, Sophia. Um, so on that, we cover F2, F3, the newly announced F1 Academy, and then we're also beginning to look at things like IndyCar and other series. Basically, most things sort of open wheel, if, if you like, anything that's not Formula One. Um, and it's, it's a, bit, a bit more of a sort of lighthearted show. Uh, we started off looking at F2 and F3 for, for the um, uh, the races that we've just, uh, yeah, the races that we just had in Bahrain. And yeah, so it's going really well. Excellent. Yeah, I've listened to a couple of episodes so far. It's well worth checking out. Uh, look it up on our on our channel and uh, and give it a listen. Definitely, Olivia. Where can people go to find out more from you? Um, I write um uh, for the University um of Toronto's newspaper, so I cover F one news. You can find that um at my Instagram at Olivia dot and I also. Um, a part of a podcast here in Canada called the Chicane Crew, and we cover the previews of races and the reviews of races, and it's a fun time. So, yeah. 
Nice, excellent. And if you want to hear more from the, from the Grid Talk podcast, we have a huge back catalogue of shows you can go back to listen to. All our race shows do go out live on YouTube straight after the event, and the audio version is up slightly later. And they are available on Amazon Fire, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Music, Verbal, and Pocket Casts. We also do run a Patreon. If you want to help us to continue doing what we're doing, please consider donating to us. Everything does go back into the show to improve the experience. We will be back this weekend to review the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix qualifying on Saturday and then the race on Sunday. We look forward to seeing you then. Goodbye. <laughs>